guys, Chris with Microsoft here with another exciting episode of Let's Tech. Today we're going to be talking about how to change um, or migrate uh, text-based standard primary slash secondary zone um, and move that into an Active Directory integrated zone when your DNS server is not a domain controller. Um, as you're going to be in an Active Directory integrated mode after you do this, obviously you'll move it to a domain controller. So what I have is 9ZDC1, which even though its name would suggest it's a DC, is actually not a DC yet. Uh, so this is just a standalone member server running DNS. Uh, and over here we have 9ZDC2, which you can see it actually has some forward lookup zones. It is a domain controller. It is hosting the 9Z uh, domain. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a zone that is not in existence yet, create it, and then we're going to show you how to kind of step by step get that to become Active Directory integrated. So first we need a zone. Uh, so let's just call this uh, something simple like let's, uh, let's call it myzone.local. And then we're going to say next and we're going to have it create a new file. So text-based zones obviously do actually exist as a text file not in a resilient multi-master database uh, with attribute level replications and conflict resolution that you get when you go to the cool factor of uh, AD integrated. With AD integrated you obviously also get some extra layers of security. So anyway we're going to go ahead and create that. I'm going to say allow uh, not, you know the non-secure and secure dynamic updates. So you, in most zones we'll want to have dynamic updates say, um, up to date. For a lot of these folks this would actually be their domain zone that they're now trying to get Active Directory integrated. So that's probably what yours already looks like. It looks like a zone similar to this. Probably already has its uh, maybe, maybe some aging and scavenging set up and maybe uh, you know whatever you, you happen to have in yours. It's got some records in it. So let's just create a uh, same as parent record. Uh, let's just make up some stuff. 1.0.10 We'll create a uh, one called, you know, DC, and maybe we'll call that. Um, so we're emulating something that looks a little bit like a real environment. Um, all right, so client. Let's just get a few little records in here. Ten dollar one dot oh dot thirteen. All right, fine, cool. Add. Okay, done. Okay, so here we go. We've got uh, several different records that exist they're only in a text file at the moment. So what do we need to do? Well first thing we need to be able to get a copy of it over to a domain controller. Just because I created this does not make it exist over here on the domain controller. It, it's not over here because it's not AD integrated. Any domain controller that has got the DNS role will automatically pick up any zones that you create that are Active Directory integrated. So um, because this is just a text-based standalone zone, zone on 9ZDC1, that didn't happen. So we need to get a copy of it over there. The, uh, uh, the way you go about doing that is allow a zone transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and allow a zone transfer uh, to uh, any, let's say, to the following servers. Let's say we're going to give this to 9ZDC2, and we're going to let him go ahead and pick that up. And we're going to get rid of that there and click OK and click OK. Now we're going to go to 9ZDC2 and we're going to pick up that zone. So I'm going to say new zone. I'm going to say I'm secondary now which automatically unchecks the store in AD. So we're just going to get a copy of it here. So this was my zone dot local. I can't remember. Better go look and make sure. My zone dot local. Okay. Too much coffee today and I Usually can't get my memory working very good, but today it's working. So 9Z DC1 is going to be our, our primary here. I'm going to delete the IPv6. You see that it ungrayed out the check mark, so it's going to pull that over. We've got a myzone.local, and you can see it's already transferred everything over. So we've got the zone, we're a copy. Now as a secondary, that means that I don't actually uh, get to make updates to this. If I were to create a new record here, um, so, uh, you know, try, try to do anything to, to this, it's going, it would refer any rights over to uh, DC1 because all he is is a secondary copy. So we don't have a lot of things we can do here, as you can see, no new record here. If I were to uh, pick up an update from a client trying to create a new record, I would 
simply refer this to the start of authority, which you can see is 9ZDC1. I am not even listed as a, uh, a name server in this in this zone because I'm just a secondary copy. That's just like PDC, BDC back in the old days of NT4, right? We have a single point of failure. We have one master copy of the database, no secondary copies of the database, and there's just not a lot uh, that you can do with with uh, that from a, a, a scale out and a resiliency standpoint. You know, just just not like having multi-master databases like AD. So, all right, next step, we need to take myzone.local and we actually need to change its properties since we have a full copy of it now. We're going to change this from a secondary to a primary um, zone. Oh wait, first I have to come in here and I need to uh, change the type. How did I do this before? Oh yes, first change it to primary and apply that and then I can change this to store an active directory. Now let me let me make sure that I uh, cover what that means to you. So ADSI edit, let me go into my partitions real quick. Um, so I've got several partitions in active directory and if you've watched any of my other episodes um, I've kind of covered what those do and, and what they are and how they exist. What uh, is important to understand about the partitions in active directory is that application partitions are great places to store your um, let me remove this real quick uh, your your DNS data. Right? So I'm going to move this into um, a couple of different places so you can see it appear, and I'm going to make connections to all of the different places where you might store your uh, DNS. So I'm going to connect to the uh, domain as well. It is possible to store it here. That's for legacy 2000 behavior, and it's not a good idea. You should be in here or here. Domain DNS zones or forest DNS zones. And I'm going to look and show you what we've actually got in here. So under Microsoft DNS, you can see that we actually have the underscore MSDCS uh, 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 zone. And under Domain DNS, uh, we'll go and look here under Microsoft DNS, we have the 9z.local and the 9z.com domains. And then under the um, actual zone for the domain partition where we store our users and computers. 2000 stored all this stuff under Microsoft DNS right here. You can see the remote.9z.com is store, still stored in legacy behavior uh, down in here in the, uh, uh, the domain partition of Active Directory. Okay, So what we do not see right now is the myzone.local. Now I'm going to check store in Active Directory and it's not going to be stored in a text file on this server anymore. It's going to move it into Active Directory. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and apply that change. Now you're going to see the Active Directory integrated stuff uh, is now lit up. We, we have this replication scope, all DNS servers in this domain. You have three different places you can store these as I mentioned. One is in the forest, one is in the domain, and one is in compatibility mode. So jumping back over here to ADSI edit, we will go into the domain and refresh this and you will see that now we have myzone.local and it's stored here instead of a text file now with all of our little records and stuff. If I were to decide to move this to the forest and apply that change, all that's really going on is that disappears from here and it goes up into the partition for Active Directory and appears down here. Now if we were in legacy behavior and still storing it with Windows 2000 mode, it would be in the domain partition. Again, not a good place to keep it, but you would find it down here under Microsoft DNS, right alongside where my remote is. Well, I don't like them in there. I personally always like to keep everything in the forest. That way I don't have to worry about the, um, I don't have to worry about things like, in fact, I don't know, since I didn't even realize that was there, um, I'm gonna change where he's stored as well. Um, I don't need to worry about forwarders. I don't need to worry about stub zones. I don't need to worry about uh, any any kind of resolution because every single domain controller across the entire forest, if it's got DNS installed on it, it's got a copy of the zone. And zones aren't really that big. Okay, so th that's gone from there. Uh, and these things replicate at the attribute level and that's pretty cool because uh, timestamp updates and um, updates to the host record and what IP address I have and stuff like that. That's That's all good stuff. Uh, to be replicated across your entire forest, you might be thinking, well, that's huge. Well, no, it's really not that big of a deal, right? We've, we've got um, 
We've got little bitty updates at the attribute level, timestamps, IP addresses uh, that'll, that'll go around and, and pick that up. If you were to look at that, be a uh, tiny little text update. Okay, so we've moved it here. Now here's a problem. I'm, I've still got a whole bunch of clients that are very likely still pointing to that old DC or that old DNS server uh, to pick up their name resolution, and I don't want to break that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the properties of the zone so that it now allows for zone transfers temporarily. And now you'll want to come back and change this later after you decommission those servers. But obviously if your DHCP is handing out a whole bunch of DNS servers and these older, um, you know, this older non-domain controller, older version of the zone is, um, you know, still what they're looking for, it's going to need to have accurate records. So what we need to do is transfer the zone and we'll go ahead and add in 9ZDC1. If you'll remember, he was the guy who uh, we started all this stuff with. So we're going to allow the zone to be transferred to him, which is how you can allow an Active Directory integrated DNS zone to be replicated, sort of. Well, I mean, I, I would say replicated uh, to a non-DC. You just create a, a zone transfer capability, and then you go in and edit the zone change it from it still thinks it's primary we're going to make him secondary now now when we do that you see that it gives me some options here to give me the primary master server so now I'm going to point this back to 9zdc2 because he's got a copy of the zone kill the IPv6 off that there we go and now he sees himself as a secondary zone he can answer to the requests of the folks who are um, asking questions like, hey, where do I find DC and where do I find client? He can answer those questions, but he will refer any changes like, hey, my IP address just changed and uh, it's now 10.1.0.14. He'll refer that up to DC2 because DC2 has a master copy. And, and you'll notice that too when we look at the, you know, the folks up here who are masters of this, uh, this guy. Let me move that over just a little bit. You can see that we have uh, in my zone name uh, dot, dot local uh, he shows himself as the start of authority now any domain controller can be the start of authority and you'll notice also that SBS uh, 2011 is listed as a name server in this directory as well because you know, I didn't touch SBS 2011 we didn't even look at that server the reason it's in that list is because he's another domain controller in this environment uh, so that is the easy way to kind of get yourself into an active directory integrated uh, DNS zone and be able to handle that request and get it into a little bit more stable, a little bit more secure, more resilient way of doing things. So anyway guys, this has been Chris with Microsoft and as always, thanks for watching. If you did find anything about this useful, please give it a quick like and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also my blog is at 9z.com. Uh, it's really easy to remember because it's just the last number and then the last letter dot com. Uh, in there you'll find links to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my Twitter. Um, and so again, thanks a ton for listening and I'll see you guys in the next episode.